Our first guest today joins us in support of our Body Stories campaign. Actor, campaigner and documentary maker Adam Pearson was bullied for years because of the way he looked. Now, ahead of next week's Jeans for Jeans week, he's got a powerful message to anyone struggling with their own body image. So, a very, very warm welcome to you, Adam. Lovely Yay, to have you on the Adam. show today. Hello. No, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Absolute pleasure to be here. Oh, thank you so much. And, and tell us a bit about Jeans for Jeans. What is this all about? So, um, <clears throat> every year, Jeans for Jeans <laughs> runs a, a fundraising campaign. And we're in our, our 25th year now, where everyone slaps on their denim to either work or school or has a, a private event and just raises money for the charity that we then disseminate as, as grants to charities who are in the area of, of genetic disorder. Mm -hmm. And in 25 years, we've raised over £45 million for so various good yeah. charities and, and causes. And it's a really in, important issue and a lot more common than people think it is. Statistically, one in 25 babies are born with a genetic condition mm -hmm. every year. That's 30,000. And there are 2.4 million adults in the UK who have a genetic condition. So that's the size of, of the market that we're trying to serve with charities and initiatives such as Jeans to Jeans Day. Adam, you talked a lot about the fact that you were bullied at school. And uh -huh. obviously that there are children, you know, going back to school this week and they will be bullying. Whose responsibility is it to stamp out bullying? Is it teachers? Is it a combination of teachers and parents? Did you find support in, in the school system? I, I think it's everyone's responsibility. And um, the school playground is, is is an incredibly strange place. It's Darwin's theory in perfect motion, any secondary school playground, or primary school for, for that matter. And I think it's all about being honest and talking to people, be it teachers, parents, other children, or each other, about what's being said and, and how it makes us feel. Because very often, even bullies are carrying the baggage that's making them act the way they do. And I think it's all about respecting each other as each other and having a real kind of come with your mentality in the education system. Adam, I've heard that sometimes people secretly film you. Um, how do you deal with that? I, if I clock it, I go up to them and check it and make, make sure it's a good photo, point one. If you're going to put me <laughs> on social media, at least have me looking sexy. <laughs> and then I... I I, I call them out on it and I, and I crank up the awkward and I, I want people to feel the weight and the gravitas of, of their behaviour. But I won't be aggressive or, or hostile about it. I think you can be a bit gracious and a little bit cheeky about it to sort of drive the point home without crossing that line and, and being hostile. Two wrongs don't make a right in that situation. Adam, it's a, it's a huge um, honour to talk to you as the, I, I'm a, a patron of a Rochdale charity that um, researches, as a, you know, funds research into genetic disorders. And what you've just shown there is that how you, um, how you open up conversations with people by taking um, the humorous side of things. We obviously know you've got a great sense of humour. And I know from people that I've dealt with with genetic disorders, because they look slightly different, some people... Are uncomfortable and they don't know how to approach it. But you basically, you take the fear out of it and, 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 and you're very, very funny. Do you find that works most of the time? I think that's the secret to any, any good communication. And I think very often when you're trying to educate or inform people or, or campaign, there's a tendency to meet people where you wish they were as opposed to where they actually are. And if you can not necessarily mock the situation but make light of it and make it accessible... And, and remove the fear or the element of unknown and almost kind of quell people's anxieties. Because there is going to be a lot of anxiety there when you're confronted with something you don't know. Yeah. Mm. And the sooner you can level the playing field and take away that kind of element of the unknown and mm. show the, the human side of, of genetics as opposed to just the medical side, mm. people become instantly more relaxed. And then you can thrash out a very difficult but very important conversation in a very helpful manner. Yeah. Mm. Adam, you're, you're a big supporter as well of our Body Stories campaign. And one, one, of, the, one of the things I love about the way you, you talk about the, the differences that we all have in our body and how we present ourselves to the world is that loving your body and being body confident is not the same thing. 
No, not not at all. And we, we, we all have days where we wake up and we're having a bad hair day or we feel a bit low or, or we're not in, in the mood. Being body confident doesn't mean you wake up every day uh, and wake up to a Katrina and waves walking on sunshine and dance around the room feeling sexy. It just means that you, you're aware of what your body is and how it works and, and you accept it come rain or shine. Yeah. And you also give other people the same privilege to do so. Yeah. Do you know, before we go today, and I've, I've, I'm so sad that we're, 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 we've not got longer with you, can we talk about the T-shirt that you're wearing? <laughs> oh, wow. I knew telling your research it was a, this was a mistake. Um, <laughs> I lost a Mario Kart-related bet with a child, and now I'm wearing a unicorn dinosaur fairy <laughs> T-shirt. It happens. <laughs> So does that mean cool. you've won a bet to wear a unicorn dinosaur t-shirt on Lou Simin? I've not, I lost a bet. You <laughs> lost a bet? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I'm sorry I brought it up then. I thought, <laughs> it, meant that, I thought it meant that you would, <laughs> you would have won the bet. Look, very quickly, tell us about... You've, you had a, a, a rather... Well, some would say a disaster. I actually think this lady just doesn't get your sense of humour. You went on a second date with a lady and you decided to take her to Ikea, which I actually think was a stroke of genius. <laughs> yeah, tell us a little too. bit about that. <laughs> Well, the, 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 the key fact that you have left out of that, that segue there is that she was also Swedish. <laughs> and I I told people I was going to do this. I'd consulted the people who I thought were my close friends and family. And every single one of them laughed and said, that's a great idea. You should definitely do it. Yeah. And I lived down the road in Croydon, so it wasn't like it was out the way. But I thought it would be sunny, cute, charming and adorable. Yeah. And I learned very quickly I was wrong. <laughs> and she just glowered at me over a lunch that I'd paid for, going, and I quote, you are not very funny today. <laughs> and then we had an awkward tram ride home. And, do, you, do you know yeah. what, Adam? I just think it, it was just the, the wrong person, because actually you are funny, cute, char charming and adorable. It just wasn't the right lady, that's all. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a real Anytime. pleasure to meet you and to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Thank you. Take care. See you.